Hi, I'm Brad Browning and I am YouTube's number one breakup coach. Now, in many of my past videos, I've discussed the best text messages to send your ex to make them want you back. But in this video, I'm gonna be changing this up a little bit and instead I'm gonna describe the 10 worst messages that you can send to your ex if you wanna get back together. Now, obviously this video is made mainly for, for people who do want their ex back, but quite frankly, most of these messages should be avoided even if you have no intention of ever being with your ex again in the future. Most of them are just bad news, period. So regardless of your situation and what outcome you're hoping for with your ex, just avoid sending them any of these 10 messages. And of course, these are especially dangerous if you do still have hopes of getting back together. Now quickly, before I jump into the first toxic text, I wanna to remind you that the very best way to find out whether you still have a chance with your ex and what exactly you should be doing to get them back is to take my free quiz at breakupbrad.com quiz. So after this video, if you haven't already, find out where you stand with your ex by taking three minutes to complete my free quiz. Now I'm gonna start with the least awful message to send your ex first. So that's number 10 on the list. And then I'm gonna count my way down to the very worst message, which will be number one on my list and which will be the last one that I cover in this video. So let's get started with the number 10 worst message you can send your ex. And that is, can we hang out? So if you want your ex back, you will eventually likely need to, to see them in person to, to flirt and rebuild natural organic attraction again. Basically, you'll need to see them to make them want you back, at least in most cases. But if you have watched any of my other videos or if you signed up for my X Factor program, you'll know that simply asking your ex, you know, want to hang out uh, is an absolutely terrible way to try and arrange that kind of in-person meeting. First of all, it shows way too much interest. You really don't want your ex to think that you're desperate to see them. And this kind of message sends exactly that signal. And secondly, it really lacks, you know, any kind of underlying purpose or, or reason for the message. So anytime you text your ex after breaking up, you should really have a clear reason why you're contacting them and what you want out of it. I mean, sure, maybe you really do just wanna hang out, uh, but you should at least frame the message in such a way that it sounds like you're asking to see your ex for a specific purpose. So for example, uh, maybe your ex has always been a bit of a math prodigy, so you could ask if they can help you study for your, your upcoming calculus exam. Or maybe they've, they've recently renovated their apartment and you plan to redo your kitchen soon as well. So you can ask them to meet up and get their opinion on, you know, paint colors and countertops. Whatever you decide on, the key is that you're providing a clear and reasonable sounding purpose for proposing an in-person meetup. And lastly, in order to subtly shift the, the balance of power between you and your ex, it's always best to sound confident when you're asking this kind of thing. So instead of saying, you know, can we hang out so that you can help me study for my calculus exam? You might instead phrase it as, my calculus exam is coming up later this month and I need a math wizard to help me get through a couple of questions. How does Wednesday after, work, after you get off work sound to you? Now this way, when you frame it like that, you've made it sound like you assume that your ex is going to agree to meet up and you sound confident in yourself and your intentions. Number nine, why did you wanna break up with me? I need closure. All right, so most of you already know that I'm very opposed to, to the idea of seeking closure in general after a breakup. Usually there really isn't any closure to be found and your ex is either is just gonna lie to you to avoid hurting your feelings um, or it's gonna turn into a dramatic, you know, serious talk that's only gonna make your ex even less attracted to you. Now, this kind of message is especially toxic if you do still hope to get back together. It signals that you still have feelings for your ex or else you, you wouldn't care about them enough to ask this kind of question and it signals that you're, you're struggling to move on. Now, strong, confident people that are highly sought after by the opposite sex don't care about this kind of thing, right? They're just focused on moving on and finding someone else to fill their ex's place. And finally, this kind of question is almost guaranteed to lead to a, to a heavy, serious discussion about the relationship and about your breakup. So instead of providing you with closure, really all that's gonna accomplish is further reinforcing your ex's belief that your old relationship was plagued with problems and that breaking up was the best decision moving forward. So avoid this kind of drama, avoid trying to talk about the breakup with your ex, and accept that closure is usually just a myth. Number eight, I'm dating someone new. Now, if you've watched my full free tutorial video at breakupbrad.com already, then you'll know that using what I call covert jealousy is an extremely powerful technique to make your ex want you back, if, if you use it properly and safely. And covert jealousy is never gonna be effective if you just flat out tell your ex out of the blue that you're dating somebody new. That's just going to ensure that they assume you're only telling them to incite jealousy or to get revenge. Now, don't get me wrong. You, you definitely should absolutely go on dates with new people as soon as as much as possible after your breakup. I mean, it'll help 
change how your ex feels about you and your potential future together when they find out about it, and it'll also boost your confidence and take your mind off the breakup. But you must let your ex find out about this in a, in a subtle, indirect way. So that can be through, through mutual friends, through a mysterious social media post with a, with a photo of you and with your arm around some new guy or girl um, that your ex is going to assume you've begun dating, or even through you know, a very passive comment when you're talking with your ex where you just kind of casually mentioned it in passing that you were recently out din for dinner with you know, a new friend. Whatever you decide, never just outright tell your ex about your dating life. Always do so in a subtle, under-the-radar way that your ex won't assume is aimed at them or intended to specifically make them jealous. Alright, and on to number seven. I never want to talk to you ever again. I'm blocking your number. Now look, if you hate your ex's guts and you really never want to speak to them ever again, then I guess this message is fine. Uh, it's a bit immature, but whatever. You know, if you truly don't care about your ex or, or ever seeing them again, then I guess it, this kind of text is okay to send. But if you have any lingering thoughts about taking them back, or at least you want to keep your options open, um, then there's no need to say this kind of thing to your ex at any point. Not only is it a bit childish and pointless, it's just going to be seen as, as aggressive and confrontational to your ex. And besides, what if you say this and then your ex decides to actually do the same thing? Well, obviously that's going to make it impossible to ever reach out to them in the future. Now, this kind of message is pointless, and it is likely to anger your ex or make them think that you're a bit immature, so my recommendation is just don't bother sending it. Number six, hey sup. Uh, yes, this is the famous pointless text message. And this is one of the most common mistakes that people make when they're trying to get an ex back. They send, you know, meaningless fluff messages like this, asking, you know, what's new or how's it going, really with, with no clear plan as to what the message is intended to do or achieve. Really, your ex isn't going to be interested in replying to that kind of, of boring, pointless text any more than you would be. So again, if you plan to message your ex, always have a reason, either legitimate or fabricated but believable, and avoid boring them with short, meaningless texts that really don't have a purpose or don't justify a reply from them. Instead, you know, just be funny or be interesting or ask a legitimate sounding question. Even, even a funny meme or an inside joke is usually enough to avoid coming across as boring. But whatever you do, don't send messages to your ex that won't make them either laugh, smile, or feel like you're asking them a legitimate question because you want their opinion or their help. As long as it, as long as it gives your ex a reason to reply or a reason to, to smile, um, that kind of message is a hundred times better than simply saying, yo, what's up? Alright, and number five, you broke my heart, I can't even function, I'm an emotional wreck. Now, guys, I realize that this might be true for you right now. Maybe you are a wreck, and maybe you're still upset at your ex for causing you so much heartache. But what exactly is telling your ex about those feelings really going to accomplish? I mean, if you for sure don't want your ex back, then all you're doing is trying to make them feel guilty for hurting you by breaking up. And I'm sure, at least in 99% of cases, that your ex already feels guilty for having to cause you so much pain. And they probably also assume that you're struggling right now, so there's not really a need to tell them directly anyway. Worse yet is what this message does if you do want to get back together. Like I said earlier, this kind of statement sends a clear signal that you're not moving on quickly and you're sitting around waiting to see if they change their mind about breaking up. And even though that might be true and might sound at first like a reasonable message to, to convey to your ex, it is the exact opposite of what's going to make them want to take you back. So what you should be doing is hiding your post-breakup emotions as much as possible. Now, from your ex in particular, but also just from the world in general. So keep your emotional support circle as small as possible, just a friend or a family member or two that you can confide in, and otherwise put on a forced smile for the world to make it look like you're not sitting around crying and you're actually a confident, desirable person that will easily replace your ex with someone new unless they do a 180 on the breakup and decide to ask you for another chance. By sending your ex that kind of message and demonstrating that you're, you're thriving in life since the breakup and you're quickly moving on, really you're injecting a sense of urgency and forcing them to recognize that they'll soon lose you for good unless they change their mind and take you back. So in summary guys, don't let your ex see your emotions. Let them see you thriving and moving on quickly and let them worry internally about that. Avoid sending any kind of message that suggests that you're struggling or waiting around for them in hopes that they'll change their mind about breaking up. Now, moving on, number four, are you seeing anyone yet? All right, so you want to know if your ex is dating again. I totally get it. Um, it's a natural tendency that most people have, but it's also pointless and it's unlikely to benefit you regardless of your ex's response. 
So avoid asking your ex about their dating life, regardless of whether you want them back or not, because it's just a bad idea. So let's say that you ask your ex this question and they reply with something like, yes, I have been seeing a new guy, or yeah, I'm seeing Tim from the office now. So what exactly are you gonna do with that information? It's gonna be painful to hear that your ex is dating again, especially if you have hopes of getting them back. And anything that you try to do or say to your ex in regards to this new person they're dating is going to be counterproductive. You can't talk your ex out of seeing someone new, and if you try, they're gonna hate you for it, and you'll blow any shot of ever winning them back. And really, you still don't know if this is just a rebound or if it's a real relationship that's gonna last months or years. So really, it doesn't help you move on. And on the other hand, if your ex says no, well, that's probably the answer that you're looking for, but it doesn't really change your strategy if you want them back. In fact, it doesn't even really tell you anything about your chances of ever dating them again, because they could be lying to avoid hurting you, or they could be telling you the truth, but still be dead set on moving on and unwilling to really ever get back together. So what's the point of asking your ex if they're seeing anyone? Regardless of the answer, you don't get ahead and you don't learn anything useful. And lastly, this type of message, really any message where you're digging for info about your ex's dating life or romantic escapades since the breakup, it, it sends the wrong message to your ex. If you want them back, you want them to believe that you're moving on and you don't care who or where, when they're seeing somebody. Um, so avoid asking your ex about their dating life, at least until they bring it up on their own for some other reason. Number three, I f***ing hate you, you're an ugly piece of sh Yeah, so I'm not sure I need to really explain this message and why it's so bad. Uh, look, I totally understand that sometimes your breakup is so nasty that you feel you know, a burning urge to lash out at your ex and try to get revenge. Maybe they broke your heart by doing something you know, truly awful. Maybe they deserve to suffer or face your anger for what they did. But honestly, guess what? Sending your ex angry, hateful messages or seeking revenge is actually not gonna make you feel much better. It's a petty, immature thing to do and it's not the kind of person you wanna be. What are your friends or coworkers gonna say when they hear about what you said to your ex? Really, the best revenge is to succeed in life without your ex, to make them wish that they'd never broken up with you. And sending rude or angry messages is honestly never worth the risk, especially, of course, if you're still hoping for a second chance with this ex. All right, and on to number two, I cheated on you so many times with your best friend. Now again, as I just described, going out of your way to try and get revenge on your ex or hurt them, well, that's petty and it's also pointless and it's likely to backfire on you. So I don't really think I need to explain this, um, but your, your ex is never gonna change their mind about breaking up if you start owning up to all the awful things that you did to them behind their back during the time you were together. And honestly, they might be devastated to hear it, but it's not gonna give you the satisfaction you're looking for by sending this kind of message. So take the high road, be the bigger person. Keep this kind of secret from your ex, whether you want them back or not. Not only is it gonna keep your reputation intact, I mean, imagine what people would think if they found out you cheated on your ex with their best friend, but it's also just the right thing to do. And again, as I've already mentioned, there's no benefit to hurting your ex with this kind of message. And of course, doing so is gonna kill your chance of ever getting back together. All right, and finally, the number one worst message that you can send to your ex, number one, why are you ignoring me? Respond already. Now, I know this is a bit controversial to consider this the single worst message you could send your ex, but really what I wanna convey is how damaging it is to spam your ex with multiple texts, calls, and messages. It hurts your chances of getting them back, it makes you look like a clingy, needy, desperate loser, and it absolutely will not make them any more likely to actually respond to your messages. So if you've tried to reach out to your ex more than once and you've never received any kind of reply whatsoever, that's your signal to stop contacting them for at least a week or two. If you try to reach out to your ex multiple times, using a different approach each time, and you still don't hear anything back, well, you need to back off and lay low for a while. Your ex's silence is a dead giveaway that they need space, and by continuing to try to reach out, you're doing the exact opposite. Not only are you disrespecting their, their clear desire to be left alone by spamming them over and over again, like I said, you're also making yourself look like a needy, clingy loser. And if you want to get a second chance with this ex, then you need to shift their perception of you, rebuild their attraction for you. And being you know, desperate, being too eager to contact them over and over again, those traits do the exact opposite. They're only going to make your ex more confident that breaking up was the right move and less likely to respond to your future messages. So if you've tried to contact your ex a number of times and got a limited or, or no reply at all, then stop reaching out. If you can, sign up for a month of my one-on-one -on -one personal coaching so that we can work out a plan to overcome their silence and rebuild their attraction for you. Hopefully, 
to the point where they can't wait to get a text from you again. Now, I can't promise that you'll be able to get them back by working with me, but I can promise we'll develop a plan together and ensure that you get the best possible chance. Sign up for coaching today at breakupbrad.com coaching before you try to reach out to your ex again. Now, you can also learn a lot more about winning back your ex and getting over your breakup just by subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. So please click that subscribe button and the like button as well while you're at it. And I look forward to chatting with you guys in the comments section as always. And thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you soon.